Welcome back. Thank you for staying with the Hot 7 Nightly News. International media houses have reported that a London patient might be the second person to be cured of the HIV virus. However, the Ministry of Health in St. Lucia is clarifying that a series of circumstances surrounding that particular individual has rendered the HIV virus undetectable in his body, but the official word to say that the patient is cured has not yet been given. More in this report. The news has spread like wildfire that a UK patient has become the second person to be cured of HIV. For many living with the viral infection, this may mean a life without constant medication. However, the acting senior medical officer of the Infectious Diseases Unit in the Ministry of Health of St. Lucia, Dr. Gail Kajada, has sought to clarify that the circumstances surrounding the alleged cure are beyond ordinary. The patient in question is from the UK. Um, he was diagnosed with HIV in 2003, and in 2012, he started HIV treatment antiretroviral therapy. In 2012, he was also diagnosed with a type of cancer called Hodgkin's lymphoma. He received chemotherapy and in 2016, he received a stem cell transplant. One of the unique things about his stem cell transplant is the donor from which it came. The donor is one of the few persons living in the world who is resistant to HIV. She explained, that an individual resistant to HIV possesses two altered copies of CCR5 gene mutation. So the client in question was lucky to get a stem cell transplant from that donor. After he had his stem cell transplant, he continued his HIV treatment for 16 months. Much the same like cancer, I'm sure you've heard about cancer being in remission, persons being in remission after five years. He wanted to know if his HIV was in remission. That is, if his viral load would remain undetectable if he went off his medication. So what he did was he stopped his HIV treatment completely. No antiretroviral therapy. 18 months after, his viral load is still undetectable. Normally, persons who are infected with HIV and are on HIV treatment, when they stop their treatment, if their viral load had been undetectable, you'll find over the period of months, the viral load would start to increase again. This absence of viral load from the patient's system has led many to consider him functionally cured. However, Dr. Kajada says that no official word has been given in regards to his status, as many still consider that it is too early to announce that he is cured. While we're not saying that the patient is cured, right now his HIV viral load is undetectable in the absence of medication. Dr. Kajada noted that information collected from this recent patient, as well as an older case with similar circumstances, will allow for research into finding if a cure is available. However, she insisted that as of now, a cure for HIV does not exist. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Solaj Alfred. The Agriculture and Fisheries Minister says the restructuring of the Fish Marketing Corporation and the Marketing Board are absolutely necessary and that plans are moving along smoothly. He confirmed that the Fish Marketing Corporation will be leased to a local, private individual. As for the marketing board, it will close on the 18th of March with interim management to be put in place. Agriculture and Fisheries Minister Ezekiel Joseph says government has to stop the hemorrhaging at entities like the Marketing Board and the Fish Marketing Corporation. He says the financial bailouts have been excessive and cannot continue. He refutes claims that the decision to close the two entities and send staff home was made hastily without due consideration for the fallout. I'm saying that the time has come for us to take a tough decisions, and that's what we are doing, all right? Um, we, because we cannot continue each time there is need for, for support, let's run to government. It has, it, it has to be able to sustain itself. In the case of the Central Marketing Board, the debt is over $3.3 million. In the case of Fish Marketing Corporation, that is over 14 point something million dollars. Right? Can we continue operating um, entities that way? 
of course, like I said, there's need for central marketing entity, and, and that's what we are doing. But it has to be able to provide the services that are required, and it, the, there must be a level of confidence in the stakeholders interacting with this board, so at least they can see this, these entities as a premier entity, an entity that they can go to and get the type of services that, they re that is required. And that's not the situation now. According to the minister, the way forward for the fish marketing cooperation has been determined with a private investor. The decision of, of, of the government is to list it to a private individual. And let me, let me clear the end that a local individual. We had a number of local persons who had indicated interest and cabinet has decided to go with one individual and I will not mention them at this point in time. The minister confirmed that the closure of the debt burdened marketing board is also imminent to be followed by restructuring. He says the ministry is awaiting funding to the tune of $540,000 from the government to make this a reality. The marketing board is closing down in, in, on the 18th. We will put a new interim um, organization, new interim management in place as, as soon as they close on requesting the funds, we're waiting for the funds, and after that, 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 that will unfold. The ministry and by extension the government has come under heavy criticism for these decisions from trade unions whose members have lost their jobs. The minister defended his move not to meet workers or their representatives, saying it's not a job for him to do. His job, he says, is to put in place policy, and the policy for restructuring has been made clear. The heads of two organizations here in St. Lucia have joined forces in demanding that the Ministry of Education give teachers and principals the respect they deserve. Trisha Lionel reports. The Ministry of Education has been accused of disrespect by the President of the National Principals Association of Sinusha and the President of the Sinusha Teachers Association. In an impromptu press conference held at the SLTU headquarters in La Clary, the officials took the Ministry of Education to task for the procedure taken in abolishing corporal punishment in schools. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development said it has suspended and eventually will abolish corporal punishment in schools in keeping with the many international conventions that the island is a signatory. President of the SLTU, Julian Monrose, has called for the ministry to rethink its procedure and instead take time to properly consult teachers on the matter. He says that training on alternative disciplinary measures in schools has not even been addressed. Monroe's likens the situation to the proverbial phrase, putting the cart before the horse. President of the Principal Association of Sinusha, Mrs. Pauline Antoine Prosper, says that she too and the members of her association felt belittled and disrespected when the ministry asked for consultation on the abolition of corporal punishment after it had already made a decision. The ministry has established a working committee charged with the responsibility of deciding the required initiatives and implementation dates towards the eventual abolition of corporal punishment. The initiatives will include the sensitization of the general public and training for educators on island. There has been no official response from the Ministry of Education on the demands during that press conference. I am Tresha Lionel for Hot 7 News. Thank you, Tresha. The opposition St. Lucia Labour Party is calling out the Alan Chastney-led government for failing to provide adequate and safe health care for St. Lucians during their nearly three years in office. The government, the opposition says, has been more focused on vendettas rather than carrying out the work which they were elected for. Rochelle Gonzalez reports. The St. Lucia Labour Party is once again proving that they are not willing to back down on applying pressure on the United Workers Party administration over their many grievances and concerns, including the state of the island's health care system. The party held a press conference Wednesday morning demanding answers from the government as to why so little has been done to solve the issues since they were elected nearly three years ago. View for North MP Mozi Jabatis said the government has deliberately caused patients, medical workers and staff at the St. Jude Hospital to endure additional and avoidable suffering and frustration. The government has over that time stopped works at the hospital site. The Minister for Health announced a threat to demolish the hospital buildings. Then she said a new hospital adjacent to the current structure when she, referred, when she referred to the current structure as that thing, the Minister for Economic Affairs has threatened prosecution and suggested prison time 
for people whom he has not named. The Prime Minister has suggested that the hospital will go to a medical school. And meanwhile, at the George Odlum Stadium, irritating and reportedly harmful roofing material was removed, used containers were retrofitted for staff, and so many other unspeakable untruths by the government about the precise response to the St. Jude Hospital situation have been spoken. Jabat is said to add insult to injury. The government has surprisingly announced new works which are soon to commence and are bound to further exasperate those on the suffering end. You will recall that around July 2016, almost three years ago, the government stopped works on the St. Jude Hospital. They declared that there needed to be investigations. Almost $1 million was used to carry out an audit. And all the time, St. Lucian's generally, and more specifically, medical and engineering professionals called in louder and louder voices for the patients to be moved to a completed St. Jude Hospital. The St. Lucia Labour Party notes once again that the government, through its reckless actions and decisions, caused patients and staff at the St. Jude Hospital at the George Odlum Stadium to be exposed. We said earlier that the harmful particles that were removed from the roof were, were, were not removed, the, the, the roofing material was not removed in a way that caused those harmful materials to be correctly and safely stored or removed from the roof. With another approaching hurricane season, the Viewfort North MP said there is no urgency by the government to transfer patients to the original St. Jude site, even with sourced funds at its disposal. The government has initiated a process which will cause further delay, intensifying the anxiety of patients and the general public. The St. Lucia Labour Party interprets the government's actions as careless and without due regard to the people who are suffering most. Our party remains adamant that the government should complete the, the St. Jude Hospital, complete the original buildings which were built for and used for years as a hospital to transfer the patients from the George Odlum Stadium after the necessary completion works take place. The opposition call on St. Lucians to continue to raise concerns and their voices about the callous actions of the government as healthcare issues, he said, affects all. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Rochelle Gonzalez. You're watching the Hot 7 News. Stay with us. We have more after this quick break.